April 20th, 2010. 11 workers died and 17 were seriously injured by an explosion on the Deepwater Horizon, an offshore drilling rig located approximately 50 miles off the coast of Louisiana. The rig burned for two days, eventually sinking and triggering the largest oil spill in U.S. history as oil and gas spewed up from the sea floor. Hello, my name is Ted Floor, System Consultant with InSource Solutions, and today we're going to talk about alarm management and some of the tools we have to help manage all the alarms that you have at your facility. In the previous video of the Deepwater Horizon accident, you know, it was determined that you know, there was a critical safety alarm that was disabled on the system to keep from annoying the operators. You know, who knows if that alarm was enabled and that alarm was enunciated properly, maybe the whole disaster could have been avoided. Alarm management is a science in itself. For example, the ISA 18.2 guidelines help you define an alarm philosophy and help you define a continuous improvement program to help you get a handle on all the alarms that you have at your facility. So now we're going to drill into some of the tools that we offer to help you get a handle on all the alarm situations you have at your plants. One of the new features we have in the product is the ability to define alarm severities. And then we can actually take the alarm severities and put a border around any graphical object to give us an alarm border showing us that severity of alarm to give an indication to the operator when he's looking at the screen he can see that there's an alarm associated with that piece of equipment and what the alarm severity is. So here's an example of our alarm border animation in action. You can see mixer 100 and mixer 200 have a level 2 alarm. Mixer 400 just came up with a level 2 alarm. Mixer 100 just came up with a level 1 alarm. You can see it's flashing because it's an unacknowledged alarm. If I went ahead and acknowledged that alarm, it would stop flashing, indicating that the operator has acknowledged the alarm. So the whole idea of the alarm border animation is to bring the operator's attention to a piece of equipment that is in an alarm state beyond just showing information in the actual alarm display. The next tool we're going to talk about is the new Situational Awareness Runtime Alarm Display. As you can see on my left hand side over here, I have my process areas defined and they came from my model view of my system platform. But if I click on production area here, I'm going to see all the alarms in my production area. It's going to give me a summary of how many alarms by the criticality at top. I can go to a different criticality and say look at my critical alarms or I can drill down and look at my high alarms, my medium alarms my low alarm so I can understand where my alarms are coming from. If I want to drill down into a specific line, I can drill down, say, to line one. I can see all the alarms, same thing. If I just want to look at the critical alarms for line one, I can do that. So this new tool gives me the ability to kind of filter and look at alarms based on criticality. Another new feature of our alarm subsystem is the ability to shelve an alarm. Shelving an alarm is important because we don't want to overload our operators with nuisance alarms. And if we're doing some maintenance on a piece of equipment or we're doing some sort of calibration, we don't want to overload that operator with alarms that aren't really meaningful. So the ability to temporarily shelve an alarm is important. So the way we do that, if I'm looking at this alarm banner here, I can right click and say I want to shell all these visible alarms. I can give it a reason, say I'm in a calibration mode. You can see they're out of my main screen now. If I go to my shelved filter here, it's telling me these alarms are now shelved so they won't enunciate on the screen, my alarm borders won't flash, they're, they're pretty much out of service. If I want to bring those alarms back in service, the timer is going to automatically bring it back, but if I want to do it automatically, I can say I want to unshelve all, and it's going to unshelve the alarms and put them back into production, if you will. So now those alarms are back truly in production. We also have a new dashboard tool to display alarms. This alarm overview gives me the ability to show by criticality the number of alarms I have by area. So it's a very high level dashboard type tool that I can put on the screen that gives me great visibility to show me where the alarms are in my system, what's the criticality of those alarms. We also have a dashboard tool that allows you to display how many alarms by severity in a specific area and kind of build an overview display of where your alarms are occurring in your plant. So if you look at these displays, it basically can roll up the number of alarms by criticality from your individual pieces of equipment 
up to a specific line level. For instance, here I have two alarms of each type in each of my mixer 100 and 200. If I roll that up to line one, you can see it aggregates those numbers. And then it also can aggregate the entire production line all the way up to the top level, showing me I have eight levels of alarms at each area. It also shows me how many active alarms I have and how many unacknowledged alarms I have in the system at this time. You know, as we discussed, one of the key features of a good alarm management system is the ability to not overload your operator with excess alarms. So in this system, I have the ability to say disable pieces of equipment or lines. So in this example, if I want to take line number one down, I don't want to overload the operator with nuisance alarms. So I have the ability to go to line number one and say disable those alarms and it's going to disable those alarms all the way down from the line down to those individual pieces of equipment. So now I'm not going to get overloaded with those nuisance type alarms for a piece of equipment that's not running. I can now enable those alarms to bring them back in production after I am finished my maintenance. So now those alarms will be in production. Those alarm counts get aggregated all the way up to the highest level production area. Another interesting alarm management tool we have is from our partner Evans Console that makes control room furniture. They now have the ability to flash a border around the desk, if you will, based on the criticality of alarm. So we can tie that into the Wonderware system, even if the operator's on the other side of the room, not necessarily staring at his screen, he can see when there's an alarm border around the entire console, let him know, hey, I have an alarm on that system based on this criticality of the alarms that we previously discussed to grab his attention to make sure an alarm is not missed. Another tool we have to help with your alarm management is Win911. Win911 lets you receive alarm notification on your smartphone, lets you acknowledge those alarms. So typically it's used for an unmanned operation or for after hours support when you don't have an operator sitting in front of a console. Another interesting tool that we have that can tie into the Wonderware alarm system is Wonderware Workflow. And Workflow can actually send a notification to other actors in your plant beyond your typical control room operator. So for example, if you have an alarm that shuts you down and before you start up, we need to send notification to a supervisor or to the plant manager, the alarm can kick off a workflow, send them an electronic form that they can accept or reject pass that form to someone else, maybe the plant manager, that they have to approve or disapprove. And eventually the workflow can send a signal back to the control room operator saying, yes, this has been approved, you can restart your process. So it's a great tool to have alarms kick off workflows to notify other people in the plant and get notifications to them. One of the things we talked about at the beginning of this video was the ISA 18.2 guidelines that one of the things they discuss in there is the ability to measure the current situation and analyze the areas for improvement and improve the situation. And one of the ways we have of doing that, we have a tool called Alarm Advisor to go back in time and look at the alarms and understand where the alarms are coming from. So let's take a look at the Alarm Advisor. So this screen in the Alarm Advisor tool gives us the ability to see how many alarms I have by severity over a specific period of time and I can change that time horizon up here by sliding my slider to give me a different glimpse of time. So it gives me a little dashboard information about how many alarms I have. This next tool gives us the frequency of alarms. I think this is the most useful tool that we have in the toolbox here. It gives me an understanding of what alarms are causing problems out there. I can hover over a specific alarm and it tells me the name of that alarm and how many times that alarm has occurred. So I can go out and fix that alarm, understand what's going on, fix that instrument, or add a debounce timer to that alarm, or inhibit that alarm during certain processes conditions. So I don't want to overload my operators with nuisance alarms. This gives me an idea of what those nuisance alarms might be so I can go out there and fix those alarms. The next tool I have is the ability to see standing alarms. These are alarms that have been on for a long period of time. If I hover over a specific period of time, it tells me how long it's been on, tells me the average duration, so I can understand, hey, there's alarms out there that have been active for a long time. Let's go understand what's going on with those alarms and try to fix those problems. Another graph that I have in this toolbox is the ability to see fleeting alarms. And fleeting alarms are alarms that come on very frequently but very short duration. So I hover over the actual alarm and it tells me how long that alarm has been coming in. So these are just alarms that need some attention. You need to go out there and put some debounce timers on those alarms. 
So I challenge you to take a look at your operations and take a look at your alarm systems and see if your operators are getting overloaded with alarms and see if any of these tools may be able to help you streamline the alarms that are coming into your plan operations. Well, thank you for watching today. I think we have some great modules that are built into the OneWare product, plus the additional add-on modules that we discuss that would help you get a handle on all your alarm management issues that you have at your facilities. If you'd like to drill in a little deeper on some of the topics we discussed, you can contact me directly at the email on the screen or contact your local in-source account executive. Thank you.